Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning, friends, and welcome to our Sunday liturgy as we continue our joy and our proclamation of the resurrection throughout these 50 days of Easter. For Easter is not a single day. It is a week of weeks plus one. Fifty days from the Passover of Christ, the Lamb of God, to the descent of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, ten days after the ascension of Christ to the right hand of the Father. Throughout these fifty days, we proclaim the resurrection. We live as a people of hope. And not only in these 50 days, but indeed in all of our days. And every Sunday, remember, friends, that the most important day in the whole year, the central day of the Christian life, is not Easter or any other feast day. It is the Lord's Day. It is Sunday the day of resurrection. Every Sunday, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, and we behold him no longer by faith, but by sight. Thank you for joining us and praying with us this morning. Please do take a moment to post a greeting, share a comment, let us know that you are praying with us and know how grateful we are for your presence and your prayers among us. If there's anyone you wish to add to our prayers, you may share their name and the intention for which prayers are desired in the comments, or you may email me at fathertimothya at gmail.com, and right around now you should see that email showing up in the comments. Remember that after liturgy, we will have our weekly Sunday morning coffee hour in my Zoom room. The link is in the bulletin, and it will also be in the comments near the end of the liturgy. Come and join us and share in the fellowship of your brothers and sisters in Christ this day. And now, friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds to enter into prayer and worship together through the gift of music. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia.
We pray the right to liturgy, which begins on page 355 of the prayer book. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for the second Sunday of Easter is Psalm 133, found in your bulletin, and on page 787 of the prayer book. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. 
It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life for evermore. A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it, and testified to it, and declared to you the eternal life that was with the Father, and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you, so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Every year, on this second Sunday of Easter, this eighth day of the 50 days of our celebration of the Lord's Resurrection, the Gospel brings us to that moment of Thomas, doubting Thomas, the one who was not there with the rest of the brothers when the risen Lord made himself known and appeared in their midst even though the doors were locked for fear that someone could come in and break in among them. And so when the brothers shared with Thomas that the Lord was risen indeed, that they had seen it with their own eyes, that they had been encountered by the risen Christ, Thomas doubts. Thomas utters those words that we know so well. Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. The gospel does something absolutely wonderfully beautiful. Or rather, Jesus is the one who does something rather wonderfully beautiful. On the second Sunday, the eighth day of the resurrection, the risen Lord appears again a second time, appearing in a place with locked doors to keep persons outside who ought not be there. And when Jesus appears among them, he makes it clear that he has come specifically for Thomas. Knowing what Thomas needs to believe, Jesus shows Thomas his hands and his side and invites Thomas to touch and to see and to know 
that the glad tidings of the brothers is not a dream, but the reality. Resurrection has won the day. Christ is risen from the grave, and death is powerless because Christ has defeated it. Sometimes, dear friends, I think we're just a little too hard on Thomas. We make this Sunday all about him, after all. How many times have you heard this day referred to as Doubting Thomas Sunday? How many times have you heard this gospel reading referred to simply as the Doubting Thomas Gospel? But friends, if we are too hard on Thomas, we miss the fact that Thomas is not alone in this gospel moment. Not just in what happens on the eighth day of the resurrection, either. I mean, if we focus too much on Thomas, we give a pass to everyone along the way who has had a moment of doubt in the unfolding narrative that is the gospel of the resurrection. Last Sunday, we read from John's gospel the account of the women who went to the tomb the night before at the Easter Vigil as we brought the Trudum to close. We also heard the gospel, but from Mark, with those women at the tomb as well. In Mark's Gospel, the women are told that Jesus is risen from the dead. And they leave in fear and trembling. And Mark initially tells us that they told no one. John has this moment when the brothers come along too to the tomb. And when the brothers leave the tomb, seeing that it is empty, and, and the other women leave as well, Mary Magdalene stays behind, trying to make sense out of what she can see with her eyes and know to be the truth, that, that Jesus is not there. What does this mean? How can this be? She is so caught off guard by that moment that when she is encountered by none other than the risen Christ, she doesn't even realize that it is Christ who is at her side. Unless we be too difficult on Mary, as we sometimes are too difficult on Thomas, remember, dear friends, how many times have we mistaken the identity of someone who is right in front of us because we did not expect them in that context, in that place, and that time we weren't looking for them. And so we missed the fact that they were there. Mary is not expecting to be encountered by the risen Christ, who is at her side and talking to her. Nor is Thomas expecting to actually see Christ standing before him. You see, neither one of them expect to find the Lord among the living. We know this because Mary's response to the risen Christ is to say to him, not knowing that it is him, Sir, if you have moved his body, tell me where you have laid him and I will go to him. And at that point, in a 
tender moment that is just as beautiful and tender as Jesus showing his hands and his side to Thomas in today's gospel. Jesus simply calls out her name. As Jesus calls out Thomas's name, Mary, Thomas, and in the sound of their own name, suddenly there is a familiarity in that voice, in that face, in the presence of the one who is before them. Suddenly, they realize. Have we not had similar moments ourselves? Where we are before someone who suddenly when they call out our name or they say something that is the basis of relationship, that makes it clear that there is a shared knowledge and experience between us and them, suddenly we know who that person is. That's what happens, not only with Mary, but with Thomas in today's Gospel. The interesting thing is that once this moment happens, Thomas does not no longer need what he said he would need to believe. John does not tell us ever that Thomas actually reached out and touched Jesus' hands to put his fingers in the marks of the nails or that Thomas ever put his hand in Jesus' side. He only tells us that Jesus offered Thomas that opportunity. Did Thomas take that opportunity? Look at the artwork of the history of the church and you will see all sorts of examples that show us that Thomas did. But friends, I think the faithful read of the gospel is that he didn't. He didn't need to anymore. For he knew that it was none other than Jesus. as he professed him, my Lord and my God. Suddenly Thomas knew him like he had never known him before. For the resurrection, he simply knew him as his rabbi. The big difference is they're not between my rabbi, my teacher, and my Lord, and my God. Today, dear friends, we do well to stand in Thomas's shoes, in Mary's shoes, in the shoes of all of the apostles the eyewitnesses of the resurrection, who initially all doubted because they could not imagine what they had not seen. We do well to stand in their shoes and ask Christ again to encounter us anew that we might know the risen Christ and be able to profess him as my Lord and my God, and then to act accordingly as the eyewitnesses of the resurrection, the followers of Jesus who are able to recognize his presence in the life of the world around us and be able to point others to his presence and the glad tidings of the resurrection. That is, after all, the point. Jesus breathes on them the Holy Spirit 
to give them words to proclaim the resurrection, to proclaim his presence among them, to proclaim his life, which is not only for himself, but for us, for them, for the whole world. For he indeed is the one sent by God the Father into the world out of love, not to condemn the world, but to save it, to be victorious in life and in death and in life after death and resurrection to give us hope. Hope in the midst of doubt and despair. Hope when all seems lost. We cannot recognize the faces of those we know best who love us the most because we simply aren't expecting to see them. And how do we proclaim that resurrection, and how do we make that presence of Christ known? Friends, today, we ask for Christ to open our eyes anew, again and again. The world around us knows who Jesus was, the man of Nazareth, the man who lived 2,000 years ago. Sometimes the world around us needs to be reminded of who Jesus is, not in the past, but in the present. And how that present shapes where we are heading and the path to eternal life upon which Christ is guiding us as the good shepherd that he is. Sometimes, I dare say, friends, we do not recognize Jesus among us even when he shows us his hands and his feet, his side, his heart, his wounds even his empty tomb. God help us, sometimes we are looking for the wrong things. As we celebrate the days of resurrection, friends, let us come back again and again to the gospel to the words of Jesus, to the words about Jesus. And let us expect to be encountered again anew by the risen Christ, that we might have words, a message, a love to share with the world around us. It will not be easy. After all, sometimes that means to show the risen Christ, we must first undo the messages about Christ that are not of Christ. There are a lot of words about Jesus that simply are not Christ-like, are there not? What would Jesus do? It's a question that is asked again and again when applied to the life of the world around us. Sometimes, dear friends, it's an act that puts our own judgments onto Christ as if they are his. But we are called to see his mercy and his love for all people, to see Christ in new and amazing ways that open our hearts and our eyes and our ears and our mouths that we might proclaim 
Christ is risen from the dead. Trampling down death by death and bestowing life upon those in the tombs, Christ is risen from the dead and is found among us, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, loving the unloved, giving hope to those in despair, bringing the kingdom of God to earth that the will of God might be accomplished here on earth as in heaven, in this life also, and in the life of the world to come. Today, dear friends, may our eyes be opened anew like Thomas's and like Mary's, that we might know Jesus among us, who is our hope, our life, and our salvation. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 358 of the prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with prayers of the people according to Form 5 on page 389 of the prayer book. In peace let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Kevin, our own bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the Church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, 
especially Joe, our president, Kamala, our vice president, Thomas, our governor, George, our mayor, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a blessing upon all human labor, and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who were in danger, especially Abigail, Addie, Adelaide, Alice, Barb, Betty, Bridget, Bob, Brian, Bruce A., Bruce B., Carone, Carrie, Charlie, Charlotte, Chris, Connie, Dan A., Dan C., Darlene, Dave, David, Dennis, Dom, Don, Donna, Ed, Eileen, Esther, Florence, Francis, Frank A., Frank B., Frankie, Gary R., Gary S., Jean, George, Helen K., Helen Y., Yorworth, James, Jeannie, Jeff, Jeremy, Jerry, Jessica, Jim B., Jim F., Jim G., Jim L., Jim S., Joan, Joanna, Joanne, Jody, Joey, John B., John H., John N., John Y., Joseph, Judy, Julie, Karen, Kate, Katie, Mother Laura H., Laura R., Lena, Lenora, Leonard, Leroy, Lexi, Lisa A., Lisa D., Lloyd, Louis, Marge, Mariah, Mary, Marianne A., Marianne B., Matt, Michael, Mike K., Mike M., Molly, Merle, Nanette, Natalie, Nathan, Noreen, Paul, Paula, Pauline, Pete, Quinn, Ricky, Robert, Rose A., Rose G., Sally, Sandy, Sharon A., Sharon W., Scott, Stacy, Stanley, Stephanie, Suzanne, Tanya, Tia, William, and Zach. That they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our congregations, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart, and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have committed themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety they may live in joy, peace, and health, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who died in the communion of your church, especially Glory Balls, Nancy Gilligan, Rick Hilton, Scott Leeds, Marion Miller, Jack Pistula, William Tome, Alfred, Barbara, Bob, Bill, Ed, Jack, Sister Jane, Jerry, John, Father John, and Tony, and all whom we love but see no longer, and those whose faith is known to you alone, 
that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Stephen, deacon and martyr, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another, and all our life, to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Now, friends, in the hope that is ours as an Easter people, comforted by the presence of Christ and his resurrection, we make an act of spiritual communion, mindful of the presence of he who is our great high priest, our life and our salvation among us. We make this act of spiritual communion 
as we continue in days when we are not able to come to the Eucharist for reasons of health. The prayer book reminds us, much to our comfort, that we may be restricted, but Christ is never restricted, and whenever anything or anyone comes and stands in the way between us, our desire to come to the Eucharist and be fed by Christ, and our ability to be fed by Christ, Christ, the true bread of heaven and the true cup of salvation, always responds the same way. We may be restricted, but he never is, and he overcomes all of the barriers between himself and us. That he might feed us spiritually and sacramentally in a mystery for which there are no words to truly, fully explain this moment, just the comfort of the heart and the soul that knows that the living Christ he is feeding the soul and giving us the strength that we need for the living of these days. So now, dear friends, may our hearts be overfilled with longing to be fed by Christ and with peace in knowing that Christ is among us and is already feeding our souls. We continue on page 364 of the prayer book. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In union, bless Jesus with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious might, rule over every hostile power, that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the Lord's blessing. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. 
Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Alia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you, friends, for joining us and praying with us this Sunday morning. Remember that after the music comes to completion today, we will have our Sunday morning coffee hour, and I invite you to come and join us at coffee hour in my Zoom room and share greetings and in fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for praying with us. Know of our love and our prayers for you, and our thanks for you. O Leah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit, Alleluia, alleluia, thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.